If you've never used a version control program before, then you're in for a real treat. This is going to change everything about the way that you code and the way that you work with your projects, and it will all be for the better. If you haven't worked with version control, then chances are you have some kind of system in order to make backups of your code as you work through a project. So for example, you have a file and you create versions of those files on a regular basis or before you're about to make some kind of change that you're unsure about and you give it an extension like the date or the type of feature or the change that you're going to be making. So you end up with a series of files in maybe in your main directory or in a subdirectory that says copies or backups or something like that. This is something that we've all done on our way to version control. It's our own sort of shorthand version control. And if you've ever gone through this kind of process, then you are a prime candidate for using a version control system. So let's say that you use this type of system where you just make copies of your files and you give them different extensions. There's a couple of problems with this. The first is what happens when you make changes to a number of different files to implement a particular feature? How do you deal with connecting all those up so that if you need to roll it back in its entirety, you can do so? without making mistakes. That's going to be hard. The chances of making a mistake not rolling back one file is pretty high. And then what about uploading your changes to the live site? So you have a set of files that you've modified, but how do you know in the end which ones you've modified, which ones need to be uploaded? If you're like me, then you just end up uploading the entire file system because you want to make sure that you don't miss out on anything. And then a third problem is what do you do if you have to work with other people? If you're an individual, this might take the shape of working with a client who wants to modify some of the files themselves. So what happens if you make some changes and you push them up to the live site and they make some changes and push that to the live site? Depending on who got there first, you're going to lose some of the changes. And this problem is really compounded when you work on a team who's working on a single application or website. Okay, so chances are there are some bells going off in your head and you're thinking, ah, yes, I need this. Okay, so how does it work? Well, first of all, instead of creating copies of every file that gets changed when it changes, you instead use a system of backups that's far more efficient. In some cases, it stores differences between files. So if you just make minor changes, the entire file isn't saved, just the modification that was made. And all of this information is stored in hidden folders. And these hidden folders reside in different places depending on what version control system you use. Subversion, for example, adds a folder like this under every folder that's in version control. And Git has just one folder at the very base of the directory that's version controlled. And at different points, when you want to take a snapshot of your work, you do so with a particular command on the command line. Or you can use a graphical interface to do this as well and it takes a snapshot of your entire project. So you don't have to worry about whether you have some backups in one folder, some backups in another. The commit is actually for your entire site. So if later you decide you want to roll back a couple of changes, you don't need to know exactly where those changes were made. You can simply say, I want to go back to this snapshot and you're good to go. Now I've mentioned the word repository a couple of times. A repository is the collection of files that are inside of your project along with the metadata that's keeping track of the changes and other important information associated with the project. Typically there's a remote component to the repository as well. In some version for example there's always a remote component and when you want to make changes you need to connect to that remote repository and push those changes to it. With Git things are a little bit more flexible and so you can have your local repository and you can connect that up to a remote repository and push it there. And what that means is that not only do you get these snapshot backups, but you also get to store those backups in a secondary location that's offsite. So for example, if your computer explodes and you lose your hard drive, you have a backup of not only the file structure, but your history as you've made changes over time. Another thing this structure changes is the process that you go through in order to push your changes to your live site. So for most of your projects, you're going to have at least a development site on your computer 
and then a live site that's on a production server. The word production is just a fancy term for live. It's the one that people are actually using out there in the real world. Without version control, when you make a series of changes to files, you have to push those files up individually using FTP to your live site. With version control, however, you can have your site locally and the remote site both connected to the same repository. And so if you take your local site and you push some changes, then on the live site, you can pull them with a single command and it pulls in all of the changes. So you don't have to worry about accidentally missing something and the process is very fast. So if all that doesn't sound fun enough, things really get awesome when you begin working with other people. I described a process earlier where you make a change and then say your client or a team member makes a change and you both push to the same production site. Well, if you're working with straight files, then one of your changes are going to get overridden unless you're very careful about making a process around adjusting files and recording those changes. But with version control, that merging of changes happens automatically. So say I have a copy of the site locally and the repository, and then I have a coworker that's also doing the same thing. They've got a copy of the repository as well. I make a change to one file. They make a change to the same file. And when we push those changes to a central repository, it will take care of merging those changes for one, or if there's a conflict and we've both made adjustments to the same part of the code, it will let us know and we can compare our changes and choose which one is the best option. This process really scales, so if you have a team of 50 people all working on the same project, then you get to all work with the same code base at the same time. There's no locking of files, so there's no point where somebody can work on something, but then nobody else can touch that file until they're done with it, for example. And we really don't have to worry about stepping on each other's toes because if we do both make certain modifications at the same time and they conflict, well, the version control system will tell us how to deal with that. So there's one more concept and set of tools that really opens things up with a version control system. And that's the idea of branching and merging. So before using a version control system, you have a project and say you want to modify that project in some way. You're gonna make some big changes to it and you need to retain a copy of the original version, but you also want to create this new version. So you copy the entire file structure and now you have two copies, one of which you're modifying to add some new features to or work out some bugs, and the other one which you're maintaining, which is maybe a previous version of your site. Now this is one way that we've probably all dealt with this problem before, but it comes with a lot of problems. For example, say in one version of our project, we make some changes and we want to copy those changes over to the other site or vice versa. Say we just want to exchange some of the code between the two, but still kind of maintain their independence. Doing just manual copying and pasting is going to be error prone but a version control system will solve this problem by allowing you to create branches. And what branches are is basically a track of development. So you get to modify code, change files, delete files, do whatever you need to do within a branch. And with very simple commands, you can push some of those changes to another branch or pull in changes from another branch as well. So you'd see this kind of workflow where you have a live site and you have a certain version of it out there. You say, this is our version one, and you're working up to version two. Well, you need to maintain your version one and make any bug fixes to it, but as you add some new features to version two, you want to make sure to pull in any bug fixes from version number one as well. But you don't want to move the features that you're adding to version two into version one because it's stable. So version control branches are a much more elegant way to deal with this. And if you're looking at different version control systems, this is much easier to do in Git than it is in Subversion. With Subversion, you have to create full copies of a directory structure in order to create a branch, although you can still merge changes from one branch to another. With Git, things are much more elegant and compact. So when you create a new branch, you don't actually create any new files, but it does track any changes and allows you to merge those changes across branches. This means that the process is quicker, 
it takes up less file space, and it's just generally more easy to work with. So through this section, you've heard me mention Git and Subversion as two different version control systems. And there's a, a number of other version control systems out there, but Subversion and Git are the most common ones that you'll run into when working with web applications or websites. In general, Git is a more advanced, it's a newer version control system. It has a lot of features that Subversion doesn't have, and it makes things easier that were very difficult in Subversion. A second benefit of learning Git is that Git is used for Drupal, so the Drupal core project and contributed modules and themes all run off of Git. So when you learn about Git, you also learn about the tools that you need in order to contribute back to the Drupal project or work within a Drupal project.